Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking back up with new morning mercy. So without further ado, Tori's just going to take it from here. Yes, y'all. Let's do it. Today's devotional says this. Grace smashes your pride, but it gives you more reason for confidence than you have ever had before. It is a statement of complete assurance and confidence spoken by a man whose pride had just been smashed. Nebuchadnezzar was the arrogant king of the conquering nation of Babylon. He not only had devastated Judah and taken its people as his captive servants, but he had taken implements from the temple to be used as tools of idol worship, which he commanded everyone in his kingdom to render or face death. The extent of his pride is captured by these words. Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty. Daniel 4.30 But while the words were still in his mouth, he was dramatically humiliated by the one who alone has true glory and majesty. By the power of God, Nebuchadnezzar was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers and his nails were like bird's claws. The pride of the king had been destroyed by the finger of God. We don't know for sure how long Nebuchadnezzar was in that humiliated, animalistic state. But we do know that when he rose out of it and his senses returned, his choking arrogance had been replaced with confidence. Are you confused at the distinction? Well, read these words and compare them to what Nebuchadnezzar had said before. Daniel 4, 36 through 37. At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor returned to me. My counselors and my Lord sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, for all his works are right, and his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Nebuchadnezzar was confident in this position and power he had been given, but the old pride had been broken. You can see this in the fact that what he once took credit for building, he now praised God for establishing. Nebuchadnezzar did not minimize or deny the power and splendor of his reign, but he did not say as he once would have said, this is from me, about me, and for me. You see, pride takes credit for what it could not achieve on its own, while confidence stands strong because it recognizes the power and presence of one greater. Only divine grace can lead you from one to the other. Yeah, this one was super interesting, and it kind of it kind of follows the fact that when Scripture says uh, pride cometh before the fall, yeah. that it's like, wow, like there is a humbling process that comes as we rile ourselves up with pride. Yeah. And something that I've been really thinking about is how it can be easy for us to get like one thing right in our life and then carry that pride and have it um, justify a bunch of wrong in our life. Mm. And now I'm not trying to throw shade at anything specific. I'm just, I'm just coming up with an analogy off the top of my head, but it just kind of makes me think of like certain celebrities mm-hmm. whenever, okay, they're a big star and now everyone goes to them for every other piece of worldly advice, yeah. whether it's skincare, whether it's financial tips, whether it's politics, whether it's, no mm-hmm. matter what, someone's done something right. And now there's this halo effect where now yeah. it's like they can't do any wrong. Mm-hmm. And we do that for ourselves sometimes. Mm-hmm. There's times where I feel like our business is doing really well mm-hmm. and And what I'm failing to see is like, I'm neglecting my family. I'm neglecting my friendships. I'm neglecting my time with God, Mm -hmm. but I justify it say, but, oh no, but look at this, Mm -hmm. look at what we're doing over here. This is doing really well. And I, that's something that kind of stood out for me in this is how our own pride can allow us to justify some poor decisions in other places Mm -hmm. because we think we're doing well in one specific place, whether it be your schooling, Mm -hmm. or maybe it is like, Hey, my relationship is so healthy, but you're not 
pursuing the Lord. You're not spending time with community. You're not working with your hands, you know, and I just really think that it's an important thing for us to think about and take that self-reflection, especially because like our, our audience are all like strong believers. Yeah. They're people that want to do the will of God. Yeah. And so how does this devotional stand out to us? And I think it's something that I was mentioning regarding yeah. like me struggling by like I get puffed up in one area and then everything else starts to struggle. Yeah. I love the distinction too, between like a life that is prideful and a life that is built on humility. Cause I think both can be misinterpreted sometimes, especially with humility, because I feel like a lot of people are like, Oh, that person is so humble. And they just think that like humility is thinking less of yourself, but really it's just thinking of yourself less. Like you are others focused. And I know in my life, in my family life, when it comes to pride, it can rear its head in so many different ways. And it starts out with, but, but no, my actions were justified, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Like my actions were justified. I was, I was right in this area, but that is not necessarily humble. And I just pulled up, like if you literally just search pride on the version Bible app, here's some verses that come up and I'm just going to like paraphrase a couple of them. It says pride goes before destruction. Pride leads to disgrace. Pride leads to conflict. Pride ends in humiliation. Like all of these things, when it's talking about pride, like the Lord detests the proud, they surely will be punished. Better to live humbly with the poor than share plunder with the proud. It's like God detests wow. the proud. And I think we're so focused on sin that we forget mm -hmm. that God detests that proud, haughty spirit, that spirit that says, look what I've done. Look what mm -hmm. I've built. Look what I've established. Look at all my hard work. And God's like, I created yeah. you. You know what I mean? Like he can humble you in the, like in a moment's notice, just like he did with King Nebuchadnezzar. And so I think because pride is a really slippery slope, like it's easy to fall mm -hmm. into it. I think that's why there's so many scriptures warning against it. Cause God's like, I'm giving you so many warnings. Like don't allow this into your life. Because for me, I saw pride rear up in my family and my family fell apart in that season because I'm right. I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. This action was mm -hmm. justified. Right. And it came at the cost of my family. And so it's a really hard thing to to wrestle with right we have to understand the gravity of it we have to understand like the way God views mm. it and we have to also pray like Lord give me a heart of humility yeah. teach me what that looks like show me what it looks like to not like demean myself or think like I'm I'm not playing any part in the kingdom or like anything like that but Lord use me in a way everything about my life points to you, points to what you're establishing, yes. points to your kingdom. And I'm just proud to be a small part in it, right? And it's not mm -hmm. like proud in a pride way, but I'm like honored yes. that God would use me in the smallest of ways in his kingdom because he is so good. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's taking this sentence, this is from me, about me and for me mm -hmm. and turning it into this is from God, yep. about God and for, for God. God. So good. And it's so important for us to know that because even as we were talking the past few days about the prodigal sons, mm -hmm. I said sons plural on purpose because yeah. there's the younger son who basically told his father, I know I know it's better for my life and I know it's better for this wealth and I'm going to go figure that out. Mm -hmm. And he found out, right? Yeah. And then there's the older brother who yeah. basically says, I've done everything right mm -hmm. and I still don't feel blessed by you. Yeah. But what was so cool is to see how the loving father interacted with both of those different moments of, of pridefulness. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just want to encourage us all that we all have a propensity for pride. That's ego. That's where that's sinful desires. That's flesh. That's like, that's the human condition. 
And so some of us maybe struggle more than others, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we still shouldn't check in with God about that. Yeah. Cause just like you say, I have a, I have a propensity for gluttony. And so I keep that in check. Okay. Well, it's the same thing for us with pride. We're like, okay, I'm noticing myself increasing in this area. I'm, I'm getting in the gym and I'm feeling good about myself. It's important for us to kind of keep those things in check mm -hmm. because it is easy to fall into pride because our flesh kind of wants that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We like want the glory. Yeah. Want to pray something out? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for tough truth, God, that sometimes our sinful nature desires pride, desires glory, de desires for the world to revolve around us. And we think that we are the main character when it couldn't be further from the truth, God. We are honored to be a supporting role, to be an extra in the grand story that you are writing and telling, Father. Lord, I pray against any pride that would come and try to attack our lives, God. We pray against it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for a spirit of humility to be all over our lives, Father, that we would walk in a humble way, exalting you, glorifying you, and bringing you honor in each and every thing that we do, in our thoughts and in our actions, Father, in our ministry ventures, in our work ventures, in the way we parent, in the way we do community, God, that we would go about it in a humble way, Father. Not a look at me and look at how good a Christian I am. No, Father. Let us not fall into that trap, but let us lead with grace and humility and see people and love people the way you do, Father. And remember that we are here to build your kingdom, that this is from you, about you, and for you, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. When else that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget to love you. We love you guys. I'll be talking to you tomorrow. Arrivederci.